All right, hi everyone, my name is David, and I'll be talking to you guys today about D3.js and how you can use it together with React, which we've all been using. Um, so, first of all, what is D3.js, you ask? Well, um, it's not simply a charting library. There's like a lot of those out there available if you wanted to just create bar graphs or circle graphs. You can use things that um, are much more simple to use right out of the box, but it's actually a library for creating and manipulating um, certain HTML elements so that you can really customize what you want. So you could use it to create bar charts and things like that, but you can also create much more complex visualizations. Um, and so you can not only um, analyze, I mean, run data analysis, but also create art, for example, or just things that just look really awesome. And so what it does is it uh, binds data to a DOM element and it can update the DOM. It has built-in math calculation functions so that essentially the problem we would have if I was to ask you guys to just create a bar graph right now is that it'd be hard to, I mean, you could create like a rectangle and give it a size and, and um, a height, but you couldn't really scale it to certain data points and it'd be really, it'd be really time consuming to do that. So that's what um, D3.js helps you with. Um, so, why D3.js? Well, I went into this a little bit already, but um, you could use other libraries, like I said, but D3.js, it, um, it basically allows you to um, have more customization and interactivity in your graphs. And also there's like a huge online community um, that you could refer to for help. So there's like a lot of examples online and there's, um, it's really a robust uh, library. And so that's why it's also widely used. Um, a con could be that it could be pretty time consuming just to create even a simple graph. But um, if you do take the time to learn it, um, you can do much, much, much more. Uh, something showing, okay. So how does it do this exactly? So I alluded to this a little bit before, but it manipulates um, certain scalable vector graphic elements in HTML. So you guys may not have seen these yet, but um, with these you can essentially create shapes. Uh, so um, you can create lines that go wherever you want it to go and bar charts and things like that. And so um, basically D3 uh, manipulates these kinds of HTML elements uh, by using these types of functions. Um, there's a lot more, you can find it online, but these are some of the main ones, some of the basic ones that you can use to get started. So what these are are actually like functions that return functions. So you call this, give it certain arguments, and then it'll return you a function that you can pass in a data point as an argument and it'll like appropriately scale out what you want to uh, visualize. And so um, you can read it up there. There's d3.scale is a common one that will, so let's say you have a HTML rect element which creates a rectangle, and you can basically pass in what you want the x and y coordinates to be by passing the data into the scale function, into what's returned from the scale function, essentially. And d3.axis is yet another function that returns a function where um, you can generate an axis relative to your data. And d3.line, um, it's a commonly used function to basically show a path of um, a certain set of data points that you can map onto your DOM. Um, and what I didn't mention was that, or I actually I can show you guys a quick example. Um, so before I go into this, oh yeah, I was going to show you guys this initially, but this is something that was made in D3.js. I'm a huge football fan, and so this was really interesting to me. If you go to a team, It'll show you like over the whole season what are the predicted probabilities that they're going to win that game. So a really good team like New England, you see that their names are highlighted here. Um, that means that they're predicted to win. Um, and then you can go to the exact probabilities by moving there. But here, if you go to like a not so great team like Cleveland, um, they like you can see that their names aren't highlighted as frequently, and so that means that they're predicted to lose. But I mean, you could do things like this. You can make other really cool visualizations with D3 that you can't really do with just 
other ones like I think Chart.js. But if you wanted to just make graphs, then those might be better to start with because they have some tools that you can use right out of the box. Um, so to give you a quick example of, so this is just a basic line chart that Mike Bostock, who created this library, he's a, a lot of his visualizations appear on the New York Times. And so this is the stock price of Apple. And let me, I can briefly explain what's happening. Um, so this is a SVG element that he creates and first um, maps out some of the basic properties such as the width, height, the margins. And then he, what he does here, this var x, it's, it's actually a function um, because d3.scale returns you a function as I mentioned before. And so you use these um, scaling functions to basically, see look, at, um, x is right here, it takes in an argument which is a data point and that's how you create this line that you will um, eventually just append directly onto the DOM itself. Um, this is using D3 without React, um, where you can you know, directly manipulate the DOM with D3. Um, but uh, we go back to the presentation here. Um, you can actually use it with, with React. And this gives you all the benefits of React um, with, D, with all, the, all the strengths of D3 as well. So you can you know, reuse charts if you want, for example, using um, React components. You can um, quickly update charts by using state changes, for example. And um, you can selectively render components because, again, React uses the virtual DOM. So um, you can work, you can marry these two different libraries together. Um, there's many different ways you can do this. But uh, a very commonly used way is to have React update the DOM and create the DOM elements. And D3 will do all the math functions for you, like all the scaling um, and all the creating the axes, creating the, uh, creating the attributes for these HTML elements. Um, you can use D3 for. So for a quick example, um, we all made the Juke app earlier in our junior phase. And so wouldn't it be nice if you could add some analytics to this Juke application? So if you were to just use D3, I mean, if you were to use D3 together with React, then essentially you can, you can um, integrate D3 into existing React applications. So um, to give you a quick, a little, let's see, dashboard. So this right here is a chart that I was able to make um, using D3. And uh, you can add certain, I mean, it allows you to have certain features like it'll highlight a different color based on you know, the genre. And this basically shows um, you know, the songs that are played the most. I wish I could put my songs on here, but these are just the songs that we were given. Um, and then uh, basically it would respond to whenever you played a song, it would you know, change the data accordingly because um, it's getting all its data from the state. And it's using the D3 functions under the hood in order to have proper scaling applied. And there is also a quick interactive, let's see. So this is kind of like a time, so this is also, um, it's not necessarily a D3 feature, but um, it just shows how you can use React's, uh, you know, state changes to sort of dynamically render certain certain attributes. So, like this, before I start, this rep top uh, tooltip represents time, twenty in a twenty-four hour scale. So this will kind of show what genres are being listened to, um, like based on like when time passes. So. Uh, this is a moving average line, and it'll show you know um, certain genres might be trending up um, at certain times and trending down. So it might look kind of weird initially because there's not that many data points, and this is dummy data, but it just kind of starts mapping out like as time progresses, you know, um, what kinds of the genres are you know trending, and obviously you can use this. This is a limited application and this is all dummy data, but if you had a larger data set, you could run this and see maybe some interesting patterns of you know, trending genres, for example. Um, but this is basically all made possible uh, through 
sort of using the using React to render components and using D3 to run all the math functions and all the scaling functions as well. Um, let's see. So basically, yeah, this is sort of the structure, um, the high level structure of what my, oh wait, is it not showing? Oh, sorry. Um, so this is sort of the structure of um, how this is happening and where the data flows are occurring. Um, so right here, bar graph.js, that's where a lot of the scale access um, functions are being created and they're being passed as some of these properties that are being, that are properties of these HTML um, scalable vector graphic elements are being passed to children components. Um, and this will allow, you know, re-rendering based on if, you know, uh, data is filtered in a certain way and things of that nature. And that pretty much sums up my presentation. Um, thank you guys so much.